welcome to Feed Me Vegan. Thank you for joining us today. We have a very special guest. I'm Chelsea, and here with me today is Mistress Ginger. Mistress Ginger is a local cookbook author of Mistress Ginger Cooks. She is a fantastic singer, a talented dancer, and breathtakingly beautiful. Oh, Chelsea. <laughs> I am very honored to be here to be a part of this show and to show you some of my vegan cookery. So um, I'm with the Animal Rights Coalition. Feed Me Vegan is a um, program of Vegan University where we show vegan cooking as easy, fun, delicious, and affordable. So that's what we're doing today. Most of these recipes have just a handful of ingredients, so you, pretty much anyone can make them. Absolutely. Um, and for some of these, you do need a food processor or a blender or a hand mixer. So if you have those things, you're pretty much good to go with these. Now, the first recipe we're going to show you, we're actually going to start with dessert. Because mm -hmm. it needs to, to go to the freezer once we whip it up. It's very, very easy to make, though. You take your, your food processor. This is called iced cocoa cream. So it's like a non-dairy ice cream. It is a non-dairy ice cream. It's not just like one. It's a non-dairy ice cream. Now, make no mistake, I love chocolate. Mm. Yeah, sometimes people find out I'm Who vegan doesn't? and they say, well, don't you miss chocolate? Have you ever heard that? No. Well, there's no reason to miss chocolate as long as you don't have the, the milk chocolate, the dairy chocolate, but you can have dark chocolate, you can have cocoa powder. This is cocoa powder. See that? That's one of our ingredients. That's a, a quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. Over here we've got one cup of mashed avocado, make sure that's ripe, and one cup of mashed banana, also ripe. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how are we going to make ice cream with vegetables and fruit? Well, well, it's pretty easy. Well, cause banana is sweet, so that goes in there. Avocado is very rich and creamy, and it sounds a little odd perhaps, but um, you won't really taste the avocado so much because there's so many other flavors happening and it just adds that, that creaminess that we all love when we think of ice cream. And then a quarter cup of the cocoa powder. Mm. And then we have a few other ingredients, starting with pure peppermint extract. This is a variation on the recipe. You have three variations. You have cocoa mint dream, cocoa mm -hmm. peanut ripple, you could add peanut butter instead, or cocoa raspberry swirl, you could add raspberries instead. This one is the peppermint. We're gonna do half teaspoon of peppermint extract. That's good. And then we're gonna do half teaspoon of vanilla extract. This is gonna be so delicious. I can't wait to eat this. This is gonna be my breakfast today. I think it could be, because it it's be. that wholesome. Um, Oh, we've come undone. Oh, yeah, it's a little leaky at the bottom. That's all right. Then we'll add three tablespoons of agave nectar. And I don't know if you're familiar with agave nectar, but it's a lot like honey, except it's not. No bees were involved in the making of it. I suppose you could also use maple syrup if you wanted to, right? Yeah, yes. Any liquid sweetener, I suppose, could probably work. Bee free this is honey, the only one I've tried. agave, yeah. maple syrup, rice, nectar. Absolutely. Okay. Should I put There's this over some here? Some of that. Yeah, so we're going to plop that on our, our food processor. Then we're just going to whip that up. Oh, look at it! It's going to be so good. This is when I go to my rubber spatula. Oh, your favorite. I know. I, I love a rubber spatula. Who doesn't? This is fun for me to have someone on the show who knows how to cook because, as you know, our normal co-star Ryan does not do the cooking, but this is kind of fun for me to be the sidekick. Oh, well, we could all use a sidekick. Yeah. But I feel like your sidekick, too, because this is your show. No, 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 no. I was telling Mistress Ginger that uh, my future guests, I have to make sure they're not, they're not as beautiful because... What? Yeah. I think that would be better. If I'm no. the star, I should be the prettiest. No, we can both be pretty. Well, speaking of pretty, let's see how our cocoa cream is going over here. Oh, most beautiful. Oh, look, it's so smooth and creamy. Smooth and creamy. It couldn't be any easier, guys. It's beautiful. 
See that? Now what we're going to do is we're going to just put it in a container. Now normally what I would do is I'd put it in sort of like a, a plastic container with a tight fitting lid so that I can then transfer it to the freezer and I can um, put it in the freezer for uh, at least three hours to, so it's nice and frozen. Um, we're going to kind of expediate that process today. We're going to run it over to the freezer so that by the end of our demo we can show you the finished product. It may not be completely frozen, but I think it'll be pretty darn close. So do you think we could also eat it like if it was just chilled in the refrigerator, you could eat it more like pudding? You could. You could. You want to, you yeah. could even sample it right now. Oh. Try that? Get a spoon. Woohoo! I know you guys are super jealous. That's perfection. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Perfection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that word. Mm. You told me mm. about that thing mm -hmm. that you do. Okay, I'm going to run this to the freezer. You want to tell them about your next? The next recipe, yeah. yes. So our next recipe is called Bodacious Tortelloni. So you've probably heard of tortellini. This is a veganized version and it's tortelloni, so it's a little bit bigger. These are basically Italian dumplings that have been stuffed with a tofu ricotta cheese. I put that in the freezer. Wonderful. Well, thanks for coming back. Oh, of course. Not leaving me here stranded. Never. I would never. Okay. Good. Well, here we go. We're going to um, start by making our dough for the noodles. Yes, yeah, so what I've done, and let me grab our, our recipe from our magic drawer over here. It's um, magical. It's a magic drawer. You never know what's coming out from over <laughs> there. Um, so what I've done, what we should start with. Direct me. Is our, our blender. We I'm need our blender. I'm at your service. And we need our egg replacer. And Tell we us need about egg replacer. Some water. Um, egg replacer, you know like eggs, we don't eat them anymore. So sometimes for baked goods and things like pasta, if we're going to use something um, where we need to bind, like an egg would, we use the egg replacer. Yeah? So what we do is we take two tablespoons of this egg replacer and we mix it with half a cup of water now you can do this in a blender, which is what we're going to do right now. We're going to take two tablespoons of this. Let's find Maybe. our water. Oh, it's in there. Uh huh. So this is going in the. This is going in here. How much? Yeah, two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Oh yeah, you have it right there. Yep. Uh, and we're going to blend that up. Real good. At the same time, you want to prepare some dry ingredients here. This is two cups unbleached all-purpose flour. Uh, and then you'll want to have more on hand for rolling out your dough. And a half teaspoon of salt. And you'll, you'll have mixed that up nicely. A third of a cup of water, did you say? Uh, half cup. Oh, perfect. That's exactly what we'll do then. Oh, look at me. I'm I'm typically good at following flour. instructions. Well, good, because I mean, I'm a mistress and I'm good at giving instructions. <laughs> now, I like that about you. I'm going to, you're doing a half cup there and you're yeah. going to whip that up for a couple minutes until it's good and frothy and Ooh. that activates our egg replacer binder. Okay. You can get this in most, you know, natural food grocery stores. You can buy it at Cub too. You can buy it at Cub too, apparently. That's or Amazon. Great. Or Amazon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run and get my mixer. Okay, pretty frothy. So you guys, you can use a lot of different things for egg replacer. This works best for this recipe, but there's a lot of different things people use. So you'll use flaxseed, you'll use chia, you'll use banana, you can use sometimes mayonnaise. There's lots of things you can use for egg Binding. replacer. Binding, Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. I mean, I can't speak to using those for this particular recipe. Right. Certain recipes, you know, have a more delicate grain, like flaxseed might give it more of a, yeah. a grain yeah. in there or something. Well, and I often get the question, looks great. So this what we'll what do... This is what it looks like when it's uh, frothy, frothy perfection. I want to show you this. Yeah. So it's egg-like. Do you want me to dump this in here? Um, Not yet? Yes, you may dump that in I there. I may. Why isn't this going in here? Thank you, mistress. 
All right. So with that egg replace, you'll add in two teaspoons extra virgin olive oil. Oh yeah, let's so do it. So we we would have done that, but we can actually just sprinkle that on top, and I'm just, I think it'll be just fine. Here you go, sugar plum. Can I call you sugar? Uh, do you not prefer it? Well, I have so many names now. Um, you're you're welcome to. Oh, okay. really? But uh, I love terms of endearment. Yeah. Well, this is this is endearing. Let me tell you. This is endearing. <laughs> So we're going to just mix that together with our mixer here until it's good and crumbly. Hmm. It doesn't take too long. Good and crumbly. I'm so excited that we're making pasta today. Carbs are my favorite. Carbs, like carbs. are good. I like carbs with my carbs. Carbolicious. Mm -hmm. So what happens then you might want to know. Let's find out. We're not we really need to sure. make this more liquidaceous, so we need some more water. water. So I would take um, half a cup of water and put it, let's put it in a little bowl. Do we have an extra little bowl? Yeah, sure. We, we're having a bowl frenzy up here. We just have so many bowls, we don't know what to do that with it. That looks good. We're going to add one tablespoon at a time. Voila. This, that contraption. That'll do. So. Um, I'd actually start with about two tablespoons. You'll end up adding about a quarter cup of water, um, but you want to just add enough so that it starts to clump up and it's form. It's kind of like pie crust. It's like, like when you make pie crust. Exactly, exactly. Um, you don't want it to be too moist, but you don't want it to be too dry. So you just want to add just enough so that it will clump and form a nice dough ball. Mmm. Do you, you bake pie a lot, don't you? You know, I don't really believe in pie, but sometimes I'm like a really nice person, and when people like pie, sometimes I make it for them. Aww. But I prefer cake. We have You're a messy going cook, Ginger. everywhere. Well, I'm used to a bigger bowl, oh. uh, frankly, and this is not keeping it contained. So we have people. They'll clean that up for you. Well, it's that's me. very kind. It's me. I'm, I'm the people. You're the people. We need to add more water. I like being a messy cook, though. I think it's part of the fun. It's part of the process. Yeah. Especially when someone else is cleaning it up. Oh, here we go. It's coming together. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. That's yeah. looking good. Once it gets to the point where you really can't even mix it anymore. Yeah, it's check this just out. just clumped up. That's perfect. That's great. So what you'll do... You need some more flour. ...is you'll form that into a ball. And yes, let's dust that with some flour. Do you want it right in here? Sure. That's Not too great. much? That's good. Okay. So um, could you bring out the plastic wrap? Yes. And so you have a nice little dough ball that's lightly dusted with flour. And, and then we're does gonna this cut go in this the fridge? In half. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna cut this in half. Voila! Voila, <laughs> green knife. Aren't they fancy? Which was a, it was, it's very fancy. It's a little disconcerting. I pulled out a green <laughs> knife. I thought, oh, where am I? What is that? That's how so we do gonna, it. So we're going to do two dough balls and we're going to chill right them in the Perfection. In the fridge. Perfection! So I would chill them for at least a half an hour. It could go longer. OK, I'm going to go put works. this in our refrigerator. Meanwhile, we should take a little pause so we can set up for the next recipe. All right. We're back. We're totally back. <laughs> and we're going to make the filling for our to tortelloni. Now, this filling I call not a ricotta because it's not a ricotta. <laughs> it's, it's That's a brilliant. <laughs> That is great. It's a vegan version of ricotta cheese, and it's a flavorful filling that's, again, very easy to make with very few ingredients. So we've got one pound of crumbled, firm tofu that we've drained and crumbled. Yeah? And we're going to put that in our bowl right there. So do you have to press this tofu, or do you, is it okay if it's a little bit more watery than... I would try to squeeze, I would wrap it in paper towels, squeeze out the excess water, it's okay if it's a good. little bit watery, but... Uh, yeah. yeah. So then um, you have a variety of other ingredients that I would put into a small bowl. We're just going to put them in here. Um, so 
we have a spice blend that includes one tablespoon nutritional yeast, one teaspoon dried basil, three quarter teaspoon salt, one quarter teaspoon dried oregano, one quarter teaspoon dried thyme, one quarter teaspoon garlic powder, mm. and one quarter teaspoon onion powder. Oh, good one. So you guys don't need to write this down. We'll post the recipes um, on the YouTube video afterwards, so you'll be able to see this there. And you can also buy the cookbook like we talked about earlier. Yes. And I'm adding to that one third cup of vegan mayo. And Chelsea and I were just talking about our favorite brands of vegan mayo. You could even make your own. You can. It's pretty easy. But these days, of course, you could get vegan mayo just about anywhere, including, I think, Target. Target, has Walmart, the dollar mayo. store. Yeah, it's Trader crazy. Trader Joe's. Crazy these Everywhere. Days. It's the a good time to be vegan, wouldn't you say? It's a great time, and it's only going to get better. It's always a good time. Ooh. Oh, that was like the angels <laughs> in reply said yes. Indeed. So we have two teaspoons freshly squeezed lemon juice. This is... Freshly squeezed is very important. I think so, too. Um, it's just a little sexier. Oh, yeah, that too. Mm -hmm. But I think it does make a difference, flavor-wise. No. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm I love mixing vegan together our. Um, Could you pasta. use this in a lasagna recipe too? I do. Oh, that I, would be so delicious. I have a lasagna recipe. It's called Lip Smack and Lasagna. It's in the cookbook. And I use this. I use a double batch. That sounds so delicious. Along with some faux meat crumbles. Oh, yeah. And some a vegan mozzarella. That or sounds anything. delicious. Yeah. I'm gonna try that. It's a classic lasagna. I mm -hmm. took my my mother's recipe for lasagna and I veganized That's it. That's the way to go. Yeah. And then it's like you have all the flavors that you grew up this? loving. Um, certainly. You have all the flavors you grew up loving and you don't have to go without them. You can just reinvent them. Mm, you guys, it's so good. It's a perfect amount of salt. Good. It's delicious. Good. So there you go. Mm. That's your nata ricotta. And we're going to come back now to our tortelloni. Yes. Will we need more flour? Yes. We want to dust your countertop with flour. We have flour in our beaker, or whatever this thing is. Let's see where we are now. I believe Not I too know much, how though. To do this. We don't want to incorporate too much flour into our dough. Let's start with that. And we have our, our rolling pin. Oh, it's oh, yes. over on that table. Allow Did me. you get that for me? Thank you. And we have our chilled dough that's been in the fridge for at least half an hour. This is a very beefy, you guys could do some curls. Could you like, could you like some, some of this Bam. for your. Oh yeah, some whatever muscle that would work. Triceps. Ooh, that looks great. I know, it's so fun. I love working with I'm gel. so excited that we're doing this. I'm gonna turn this up to get our water boiling. I, you can take out your aggressions, I think. No, just don't go too crazy now. Um, Oh, I never have aggressions. I'm sweet as pie. <laughs> sweet as pie. Do you want to put some more on the top? Yep, we're going to keep keep the it yeah. dry so that we can excellente. And really, you want to get this as thin as possible. OK. Because then it'll just be more delicate and, and not too thick. I like delicate. That's, a, that's an important quality in my noodles. Well. This is the only noodle I've ever made. But really? Yeah. My mom Have always you made, made some? her. Yeah, my mom always made homemade noodles, and wow. so um, I've veganized them. But yeah, I love homemade noodles. And people always say, "Oh, you need like a pasta maker. You need an attachment for your thing to make it." But you don't. You can roll out dough like this, and you can use a pizza cutter. Right? Exactly. That's what it's I great. brought. Yep. It's perfection. Perfection. Oh. Oh my. I have to. <laughs> do this gingerly. Really, really work that dough. Oh, I can't not too much, though. Do you want some yeah. more flour? A little bit, yes. A little bit, yes. Let See, me, it's let really... Let me assist you. Thank you. Let me, just, let me just do that. It's hard to do it all, you know? Really, you know? We women have to work together. Exactly. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so once that's thin, and I might even work that a little bit longer, but for today's purposes, let's just that stick with that for now. That looks We're going to cut this into two and a half inch squares. So I have something. 
I'm oh. gonna run over here and get it. Are you guys so excited to eat this? I just can't wait to try this. We're gonna, so we're gonna stuff this with the ricotta mixture and then we're gonna boil it, which is really, it's, right? <laughs> we are, yes, yeah. it's gonna happen. Oh, um, you have a ruler. I actually have a ruler. You're very precise with your noodles. I'm that crazy. Dumplings, so, they're more like dumplings, right? Yeah, th these are, they're like, I call them Italian dumplings. Mm. So that's about two and a half, it's not super precise, but. So this is gonna be great. See how easy this is? You don't need anything fancy. You got a pizza cutter. You might have a ruler or anything straight. <laughs> I don't, yeah, exactly, straight. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm so funny. So you need a little spoon, right? Yeah, okay. so I would say put about um, no more than two teaspoons. Because you don't want it to, you know, ooze out, right? Yeah, no and that can that. happen. So we're probably not gonna fold each and every one of these. Let's do that many because they take time. This is somewhat tedious of a process. We so want to get a little bit of water. Okay, in a, on the edges? In a container. There we go. Excellent. So just putting it on the edges to make it sticky? Yeah. So basically. And how do you like to fold them, like in little What squares? we'll do is you'll put water on two adjoining edges. Okay. You'll flip the opposing side mm -hmm. over top your your lump of oh, not a ricotta. So cute. Are we making triangles? You'll glue it down, yeah, you'll make a triangle, okay. and then you'll pick up your triangle. So work with me here. Okay. This is a thing that's hard to show in a cookbook, so it's wonderful that we get to do this today. Then you wrap it around oh, so your you finger, your and you again, you might want to dab that with a little wetness so that it glues the sides so together. So going like that? Exactly. <gasps> oh, and then could you've it got be any a cuter? Tortelloni. Oh, you guys, look. Yeah. That's adorable. So let's dump some in. Yeah, let's just throw that in there. And what you'll do is you'll just let it boil until it rises to the surface. Then technically it should be done. And you can. How about you let me do this part and you tell them about your Alfredo sauce? Excellent idea. Does that work? Yes, I'll grab my. I'll just um, keep working away at this. My blender top here, so I can start filling this up. So you can um, dress these tortelloni with many different things: pesto sauce, a red Vodka sauce. Vodka sauce. Exactly. You could also make a homemade Alfredo sauce, which I wanted to show you today because that's the least obvious for vegan cooking. How do you make a creamy, rich Alfredo sauce oh. without dairy? without milk, without eggs, without heavy cream. Here's how I will show you. First things first, you blend up a cup of non-dairy milk, unsweetened, make sure it's unsweetened. You add to that half teaspoon of, ooh, these are so cute. Dijon mustard. My five-year-old is very particular about his mustards. Oh, really? Yeah, he, we have like four different varieties of mustard, and Dijon is his favorite, which is adorable. Just sidebar. Oh, well, I appreciate the sidebar. Um, what's, what's his name? Cole. Cole. Mm -hmm. Cole's my big one, Zane's my little one. Very sweet. Mm -hmm. Quarter cup raw cashews. Just gonna throw those in there. And if you've watched our show, you know a lot of times we'll use uh, soaked cashews. Um, but we don't need to for this dish, so just regular is fine. Just make sure they're raw. So if you're using like roasted or anything like that, yeah. that's not gonna do. That's not gonna do it. That's not what you want. That's not right. half teaspoon salt. Oh, it's gonna be so. So that's good. what we're blending up. I have one one floating. A what you have one what? One floating. Oh, so we want put that. Pop that out of there, maybe with a slotted spoon, and then yes. uh, drain it in a colander. Um, where's our lid here? Here it is. And I'm gonna blend up this. Oh, they're starting cashew to Cashew mix. I don't know if you guys can see that, but where's my pretty colander? We really want that to blend so that your cashews get fully pulverized. So yeah. you want your cashews to really get quite pulverized so you make a nice smooth sauce. No one wants it to be crunchy. No. Now, um, excuse me. Butter. Yes, yeah, so this is your vegan buttery spread. Uh, you could probably also use a, a regular vegetable oil, but this 
gives this will it be that better. totes buttery taste yeah. that we all yeah. just, you know, go for. So we want to do about two tablespoons of our vegan buttery spread. Mm. I'm just I'm so eyeballing excited about that this. for now. I was thinking, you said you could use pesto for this. I think that would be really good too. I have done that. It is delicious. So we're gonna we're just gonna cook up a little garlic for a couple minutes in your melted vegan buttery spread. Just careful you don't burn it. No one likes burnt garlic. Yep. So let that go for okay. just like a minute. This is nice and creamy. We should show. Oh yeah, show that. It's looking good. Oh yeah, see? So a nice creamy sauce. No chunks of cashews in there. Okay. Okay, let's pour that baby in Do here. let's. Now, I would normally use maybe a medium. And does pretty, it thicken up? It will thicken up. Perfection. As it reaches near bubbling, it will start to thicken. And that's what you want to do. Just stir, you know, frequently until it gets to that point. Now, a lot of people talk about how can I possibly give up cheese? I mean, that's the thing that people really miss um, when they're when they're thinking of moving towards a plant-based diet. There are some wonderful things that you can enjoy um, to replace dairy in your diet. And this is one of those things, this Alfredo sauce. And so when you invite your friends over who are not vegan and you say, try this delicious sauce, they'll say, wow, I can't believe it's Vegan. I can't believe it's vegan. They Do you remember will that? say that, truly. I can't believe it's not butter. Because I think a lot of people have the impression that you can't have truly rich, creamy dishes unless they've got dairy in them, you know? Yeah. And they just need to know. They just haven't maybe had the experience. And that's what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there are some brands of things out there that maybe aren't the most delicious ever, you know? Just or like with non-vegan food. Exactly. So you've just got to try. And of course, making your own, you know, find the recipes that work for you. That too. So this is ready. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So here is our, what do we call it? Iced cocoa cream. Oh, iced cocoa cream. And that's cocoa mint dream. It is so delicious, you guys. How about we just do a little... Let's do a little drizzle over here. A little here drizz. So we can show everyone. Oh, it looks so good. And you could probably, I'm guessing, sprinkle some parsley or something on top to make it pretty if you wanted to. Absolutely. And actually, I have some of this prepared, I should have mentioned. Oh, you do? So I can show you a thicker version of this, too. Look at that, you guys. Oh, look at that. You guys, this is amazing. So I'm just going to put a little I'm gonna get us a fork. globule there. A, glo so you see a globule. <laughs> that's, that's not a very appetizing <laughs> word, I'm afraid. Where's my... <laughs> Let's try it. I'm going to try it. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm ready. Give us a little dance. No, let's... This is the dance. Mm, oh my god. It's so good. Hmm? Sure. Make this, you guys. Make this. Look us up on YouTube, on Facebook, Feed Me Vegan. Look up Mistress Ginger Cooks. Get the cookbook. Everything is delicious. And we'll see you mm. next time. Thank you to our guest, Mistress Ginger. Have a good day. <laughs>